Is body fat spot reduction a myth? Spot reduction is the belief that you can isolate losses in body fats, typically through targeted exercise. Sit up Sammy smashes out 18 bazillion crunches a week, trying to get a toned midsection for summer. That kind of jazz. And it's fair to say that controversy clouds this idea. Lol. But rather than dismissing it entirely, let's go through a play-by-play -play so you can understand this topic better. So the earliest memory I have of reading about spot reduction was in an online fitness magazine that claimed that some areas of the body had poor blood flow and that made it harder for them to lose body fat. The solution? Promote blood flow to that body part by exercising it, apparently. And this idea has indeed been verified. One study utilising leg training protocols found that fatty acid breakdown was higher in subcutaneous adipose tissue adjacent to the working muscle. Simplified, if you train your legs, fatty acid breakdown is higher in the fat around your legs. Well, that sounds delightful. If we can increase fatty acid breakdown in fat surrounding a body part, spot reduction has to be a thing. Right? Well, not so fast. Even this paper specified that fatty acid breakdown is not necessarily indicative of actual losses in body fat, because fatty acid breakdown is only one part of the actual fat loss process. So instead of looking at short-term or acute data, let's look at research which actually examines the endpoints of body fat losses. One research paper in 1968 had subjects following a single arm resistance training program for six weeks, and skin fold measurements did go down in the training arm versus the non-training arm. Admittedly, it's fair to say that people could criticise the accuracy of skin fold calipers because they are notoriously unreliable. Also, these results were not replicated in several related trials. One study showed that tennis players did not have lower levels of body fat in their dominant arm versus their non-dominant arm. To test abdominal spot reduction specifically, one study utilised an extensive ab routine of seven exercises, two sets of 10 reps performed five times per week for six weeks. Holy abroutine Batman. Results? No difference in body fat percentage, abdominal body fat, or abdominal circumference. So, a metric shitload of ab work for the sweet sum of fuck all visible difference. Great. Although it looked like the spot reduction theory was ready to crumble out of existence, one research paper did rekindle people's interests. It had subjects following either an upper body resistance training program followed by cycling, or a lower body resistance training program followed by the arm ergometer. And they performed this three times per week for 12 weeks. The results? Although there were similar levels of body fat losses in both groups, upper and lower resistance training programs appeared to lose body fat preferentially from those regions. And this was confirmed via Skinfold and via DEXA. So, spot reduction is possible after all? Well, it's worth keeping in mind that although body fat losses were preferentially reduced, total body fat losses still occurred. This isn't quite the same thing as only losing body fat in one specific area of the body and nowhere else, as demonstrated by the abdominal training study that we discussed earlier. And realistically, it's worth reiterating that subjects only resistance train their upper or lower body. In reality, most of you watching this video are probably already resistance training the body parts that you want to lose fat from. The question isn't actually whether you resist to train that body part or not. So it may be possible to preferentially reduce body fat in areas that you're resistance training versus areas that you're not. If you want to lose body fat on your legs, it makes sense that you resistance train your legs. However, that doesn't support the idea that you can add a shitload of volume to one specific body part and reduce body fat in that area in isolation. And it definitely doesn't support the idea that you can do this on any muscle group that you want to. So to summarise, if you do want to lose body fat from one specific area, it does of course make sense that you resistance train it. But you were probably doing that already. Losing total body fat should still be your main priority, and not neglecting that area with resistance training can be a sensible second priority.